Good morning, guys. Uh, Monday, July 8th. The beginning of a week that could be very, very interesting. i uh, got a ton of stuff that we got to cover, so let's roll. Uh, some key observations uh, from uh, the prior week was uh, the fact that everything was moving on substantially lower volume. As a matter of fact, if you actually take a look over the average volumes of the last three months, the volume was actually down 30% last week, of course, uh, partially due to the July 4th weekend. But notably, the volume was incredibly low as the markets were trying to grind away in the red. As they were dropping, the volume has just been extremely, extremely low. We have not seen low volume like that, guys, in a while. So here's some key events to pay attention to this week. Powell is going to testify on Wednesday, July the 10th, in front of Congress. And the following day, on Thursday, July 11th, he will be giving a testimony in front of the Senate. So those are, could possibly be market moving conditions right there, depending on what he says, how he says, what words he's using. So I think because of that, we could see the markets trading sort of sideways for the next couple of days. So all eyes on Wednesday and Thursday this week. Now also, very interesting on July 10th, ending marijuana prohibition goes in front of Congress as well. So watch all the cannabis stocks. With that said, cannabis stocks could be bought in the expectation of what could take place on July 10th. If we're not getting any movement on the bullish sides in stocks like TLRY, CGC, and so on, going into the announcement, um, probably the expectations are rather subdued. And if anything, anything positive happens, they could actually open up with a gap up the following day on July 11th. So pay very close, close attention to the cannabis sector this week. Probably the most crucial thing for today, guys, is Apple catches a huge downgrade. Uh, one of the analysts actually puts a sell rating due to the concerns of the cell phone sales. Now, we actually made this argument a year ago before Apple dropped to the 140s all the way from the 220 level. And um, it's rallied back up and it's holding rather strong. So I'm not sure how valid this argument is. The uh, iPhone sales have been slowing down forever now. And the stock has been rebounding rather strongly despite of all these potential headwinds. So maybe we could actually take this as a sign of exactly the opposite happening. It seems to me that this analyst could be a little bit too late to the party. I think all of these potential headwinds are priced in in the iPhone sales. So at this point, any positive news from China will actually rocket Apple stock to the level of 210 to 20. So maybe this analyst is just wrong. And the fact that he's actually throwing the towel now, almost a year later when we've made the bearish case for Apple, could be a sign that the bullish reversal higher is actually in the making. So what do we make out of what is actually taking place today? Well, downgrade to a sale. Damn it, that's that's harsh. That is harsh for an Apple stock. Um, so far, pre-market, it's down from 205 to about 201 and some change. So the most important observation for the day will be, are they going to buy the dip in Apple? So in solidarity with the Apple downgrade and the Apple drop, of course, you, uh, you're looking at your screen right now, all the technology stocks, are dropping. However, anytime we see anything drop, guys, if there's anything you could have taken from some of the weekends, uh, we, videos I posted over the weekend is this. Remember the seven bullish signs. When we talk about the volume, when things drop, if they drop on low volume, is it bullish or bearish? It's bullish. So, so far, for example, we've seen Amazon is down maybe five, 10 bucks. On what volume? On volume, at the point I'm recording this, of 12,000 shares, that's basically saying, like, we don't care. We don't care if somebody downgrades Apple. We're going to buy the damn dip anyway. So everything so far is pointing to that. So when the market opens, if you see some buy volume coming up, if you see Apple is actually jumping from a level of 201 to 202 to 203, the trade would be to buy some Amazon calls 
because that one is positioned nicely going into the July 15th Black Friday for Amazon. I think if they're buying the dip in Apple, Amazon will finally rocket substantially higher. So pay close attention to Apple. Volume, we've touched upon that. And guys, the earnings season is about to be here. Tons of trades. Very, very exciting stuff. Uh, we're actually going to review one trade that could be interesting tomorrow. Helen of Troy, ticker H-E-L-E, -E, will be announcing earnings after the market tomorrow. So we are looking to trade that particular stock on Wednesday morning but after this week we're just gonna start getting a ton of earnings announcements guys so the earnings season is here you guys if you haven't taken the trade like a rockstar course it goes specifically how to utilize the earnings uh watch list how to actually make the most of the earnings season the correlation trades all the inside details of how you actually make the most of the earnings season if you haven't done that guys there should be a link below this video Click it, take it, and make sure you're ready to have the best earnings season ever. Okay, let's take a look at our histogram here. You see this big green dots. Uh, we believe that this is exactly what took place on July the 5th. To uh, bring a little bit more detail here. So remember how Friday the markets were dropping. And then by the end of the day, they erased pretty much all the losses. So... This actually coincides in our histogram with early December of 2017. What these dots represent is two very interesting things. After the market dips in early December of 2017, it erased all the losses pretty much. Uh, and then it fluctuates for a couple of days. It's not really breaking out higher. It's kind of going sideways to lower a little bit. We're saying we could see this kind of environment for the next couple of days. But notice what happens next. We got two gap ups in the making here. So we got a gap up right here. We got another gap up right here. And then we're going sideways for some time. And then we got another gap up. So we got three gap ups in the making here over the next two weeks. We don't know what's going to cause them. We just know if we're correct in this histogram. So far, it has been very much accurate with the exception of maybe a couple of days so i think it makes sense to follow this chart all the way to here so basically what we're saying we could be going slightly lower the course in the next couple of days but hold these levels over the next two days and ultimately gap up higher on the third day which would coincide with a uh, wednesday overnight potentially some good news happening and thursday market could be jumping substantially higher with a gap up Okay, if we take a look specifically, where are we and why do we think this histogram and this analog is actually precise? Well, look at the S&P chart for July 5th. Do you see this? When I'm showing you guys this right here, the importance is when the market drops and gets bought and erases all the losses, this how your candle is actually going to look in the chart. You see it's a bear, it's a bullish reversal candle. It's got the tail sticking out right here. So... The stock market drops, they buy it, and erase all the losses. This is how these bullish reversal candles look. So if we take a look at what was happening in the December and what was actually December 2017, what actually taken now on July 5th, on Friday, we're seeing similar candle formation. Now, what is notable, the prior few times the market has climbed to these high levels, the RSI has actually been given in. It has not been substantially higher in this case we got a really nice setup because this cup with a handle that you guys see right here a very bullish formation it's actually confirmed with a cup handle on the rsi which doesn't happen very often which tells us that the probability of the breakthrough substantially higher is very much still here and this is about the buy point right the buy point minute the way you want to trade the cup with the handle is this very moment where the stock market moves above this level, right? We could reasonably expect more people to jump in once we get a solid break above the 3,000 level, which could take place over the next 5 to 10 days. So once we get a solid break or more meaningful volume, and again, we're not likely to see any meaningful volume today or tomorrow because the market is going to be 
basically trying to digest everything that Powell is going to testify in front of Congress and Senate on Wednesday and Thursday. But after that, we can get some substantial change in the behavior of the volume. We could see some more buyers coming in, and that could actually create this breakout point right here in the market and move it higher. With that said, our site would hit much higher levels, maybe 75, 80 on the RSI. And if we take a closer look, Dow Jones is doing exactly the same thing. The candle is more pronounced. That's why I inserted this chart in here. We notice similar behavior in the RSI. So conditions are there. Also, um, notably, when the markets were dropping, that main point from the seven bullish signs when markets open in the red video, you see how easy it is to see this volume on this chart right here, guys. You got the red candle with the candle sticking out. So it appears like the markets are dropping, but they're dropping on low volume. Look, this volume is much lower than, for example, the buy volume was just right here a few days ago. So markets were dropping on lower volume. That's another bullish characteristic here. Now, if we take a look at the weekly chart of S&P to kind of give you a longer time story and what we're expecting for the S&P to, to, to do over the near term, these Bullish reversal candles is uh, pointed out right here. Don't be confusing this one with this one on a weekly chart. This looks like this candle right here. Remember, not all black candles are bearish candles. In this case, we are looking at a bullish reversal candle with the tail sticking out like this. So here it is, guys. So this is where we were in December, and look what happens next. So the weekly chart clearly disregards some smaller day-to-day -day moves. But, I mean, there it is. Um, you got, after that reversal bullish move, you actually get subsequent move higher over the course of next two months. So carrying you all the way pretty much through December higher and January higher. And if we were to overlay on the conditions now, that pretty much tells us we could be heading higher for the month of July, higher for the month of August, pretty much, all the way through August 15th to August 30th would coincide with this ultimate highest point on this part of the chart right here. Look at these bullish reversal candles right here. So it starts with this big one, starts with another one, and on the daily chart, the smaller candle I was showing you on the daily chart is actually represented here uh, as well. So we got confirmations on different time frame, guys. With his hand and shoulder, it tells us we can get a similar move like what we've had in December 2017, January 2018. So we're looking for a mirror image of this to actually take place right here. And after that, we're going to get a nice, beautiful drop. Guys, so we're going to be trying to time this as accurate as we possibly can, but for now, Despite of the market being in the red again so far pre-market, a few points, like five, six points at the time I'm recording this, remember, these bullish reversal candles, that's how they form. The market dips, they come in, they buy the dip, and then they move it higher. So based off the seven bullish signs that I have described in the video over the weekend, um, a lot of the characteristics are definitely here. So the next uh, picture I want to show you guys is something I found very interesting. And I know a lot of you are trading Amazon. So um, there's a very interesting observation. Last three days specifically, if you study the pre-market action in Amazon, the stock goes lower pre-market on very thin volume. Now here's what happens next. Just take a look. So here's Amazon. Pre-market drops and then represented by this red line and then it pops. It drops and then it pops. Now look at the magnitude of the pop in the relation to the drop. Okay. And I forgot to draw this one here, but clearly this one was the drop was much larger in relation to the pop. But the idea is the same. It drops, then it pops. It drops, then it pops. It drops, then it pops. So far, pre-market, it drops. So expect 
a pop to follow, especially if we're seeing that they're buying the Apple dip despite the sell downgrade. If you draw this orange line, this is a very solid uptrend in the shares of Amazon. If you connect the yellow dots, those are higher lows. If you connect them, you get a very nice solid uptrend, guys. Very elementary, but this tells us that this trend is likely to stay here and ultimately you will have a substantial breakout higher. I know some of you guys have expirations at Amazon that expired this Friday. I think they are fine. I think Amazon could easily trade above 2000 level uh, after we're all said and done. Despite of the market actually trading slightly lower potentially today, tomorrow, I think Amazon could actually be in the green, which would be a divergency. It's got reasons to be in the green. It's been lagging the market uh, compared to everything else. It's got a strong catalyst going on. And hey, maybe some people that are selling Apple today, guess what they are likely to do? They're likely to use these funds to buy the dip in Amazon. So there it is. There's your bullish case for Amazon continues. In the last video, we mentioned that maybe the support level is going to shift in the S&P futures from the level of 2960 to a level of 2980. We actually got a pretty solid confirmation of that. So the level support does move above 2980. We do dip briefly to a level of 2970 and then we hold that 2980 rather strongly actually towards the end of the day, breaking above 29.90, almost hitting that 3,000, looked like there for a moment. Similar to the Amazon observation, you could like the yellow dots, you get a nice solid uptrend in the S&P as well. Uh, today, pre-market so far on July 8th, guys, very important. Look, three times, right? I mean, this one was at three in the morning. This one was at 5.30 in the morning. This one was at 6.45 in the morning. Look at this, the market drops and it stops just slightly above this 2980 support level so if you're looking at getting into the positions don't get it at anything at say 29.85 wait till the market makes a pullback closer to this level right here and that's when you come in and you buy the call so we stick with our strategy of buying the dips july 5th market move four with a clear behavior of a move 12. this is how it actually looks on the chart Surprise, surprise, look at what we got. We got that reverse head and shoulder when we had that, uh, hit that level of 29.71 and a quarter. Um, the characteristic of a move 12 is very clear here. Uh, we open up right here. At the very end of the day, we hit that level, but then we kind of give up some of those gains. Not in all move fours, guys. Uh, the market will finish in the positive territory. And if it does attempt to do that, in comparison to the, say like a move eight it's actually going to do it in the latter part of the day and it's going to kind of grind right it's gonna it looked like it was dropping and we actually sent out a message at one point saying hey 29.78 could be the low of the day well we didn't quite nail that it actually went slightly below that to 29.71 we're literally mistimed it by maybe you know 10 20 minutes there and then market finally does reverse and go substantially higher, pretty much erasing all the losses. Now, notably, uh, some of the uh, biggest volume, again, we're not getting as crazy of a behavior that we observed in the last four days. Uh, but again, the volume, actually the biggest volume of the day happens right before the close on this move higher when you see this solid green line just spiking Looked like the markets were making an effort to just maybe lost effort on Friday to maybe hit that 3000 level and just they failed. But nonetheless, the volume supporting this literally up like maybe a four or five point move was happening on extremely strong volume. And that characteristic has been predominant going into the last part of the trading session. So we are likely to see that again. So if we are starting off the market uh, negative six, seven, ten points. It is likely to do what we've seen it do on a Friday and s specifically moving higher in the very last part of the day on higher volume. Okay, two day sequence seven four. For those of you that are good students of the 13 markets move formula, guys, you should know that move seven and four is actually exact mirror images. 
Move seven is a bind the dip type move when the markets are actually opening in the positive. And move four is pretty much an identical replica of a move seven. The difference is move four happens when institutions are buying the dip, when the markets are actually initiating themselves in the red. So seven four, that is why even though the markets were negative, move four, as you can see in the 13 markets move formula is a bullish move. So seven four, you got two green days back to back, five day sequence, seven, 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 four, uh, highly bullish as well. And what we're noticing is this repetitive behavior of reverse head and shoulders uh, keeps dominating the market. That's exactly what we're getting on a Friday, another reverse head and shoulder. Just another way to think of that in those terms. Next market move for today, we are projecting a move five in the market. It's kind of taking a slow pause, rethinking some of the things that happened last week and expecting further clues from Powell going into Wednesday, Thursday. There is another probability of a move of 4 or a 12. Basically, all bullish moves. We're not expecting any crazy reversals to the downside at any point today. Now, VIX is ending Friday session at the lows of the day. As mentioned in the prior video, we noticed that divergence would hit briefly the level of 12.04. But you know the way we track the VIX is we take the measurement at 9.30 in the morning that actually opened at 13.58. Hit a high of 14.47 and finish the day at 13.23. When VIX finishes the day at the lows, when the market is actually still in the red, that confirms the divergency that we have actually initially spotted in the morning right at the job report announcement. So with that said, continuation of VIX trading in this trading tunnel. So the trading tunnel now is very precise, uh, pointing out the level right here, 14.6, 14.7. Uh, the low part of the trading tunnel on VIX would be this level of 12.04. So basically anytime it gets closer to this, you wanna short the VIX. Anytime it gets closer to here, you wanna buy the VIX. Now we're not putting any specific trades on this, it's just an observation and reiteration of how you wanna take advantage of these trading tunnels, guys. So VIX is likely to trend sideways between 13 and 15. The key takeaways for today, sideways move five likely for the next 48 hours. In other words, no crazy breakouts higher, no crazy, no crazy uh, breaks lower, plus five, 10 points in either direction. Uh, preserve capital for best rates Thursday and Friday, guys. If they do buy the dip in Apple today, add more Amazon calls. Watch the level of S&P futures of 29.80 for levels on the bull side. And we are considering buying calls Wednesday before market close using our historic analog of December 2017 for a possible gap up higher in the morning on Thursday. With that said, guys, Take advantage of the trait like a rockstar course. Get ready for a killer earnings season. I wish you guys great success and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow.